Today's video is diving deep into some core mysteries of One Piece. Ever wondered about the secrets of the Devil Fruits? That classic mystery we've all come to accept since the beginning. Or the enigma behind those who can't swim, or how the pwned glyphs were made. And the truth behind Sea Prism Stone? We'll delve into all of that. Plus, we're uncovering stuff like what Shanks said, and other plot points that have had us scratching our heads, or maybe even those you missed. If you come across any insight that shifts your perspective, make sure to smash that like button and drop a comment. And hey, if you've got some theories of your own, don't be shy. Share them in the comments below. Just a heads up, this video covers spoilers up to chapter 1067, so be warned. Without further ado, let's get to it. Ever heard of the gum gum fruit? It's also called a devil fruit, a treasure of the sea. Eat it and you'll be rubber all over. But a heads up, you'll never swim again. Shanks, remember episode one. Luffy ate the gum gum fruit and Shanks hit him with this line. The whole not being able to swim thing if you eat a devil fruit. Pretty much common knowledge, right? With One Piece weaving countless mysteries and setups from episode one. Wouldn't it be weird if they didn't explain this whole can't swim setup? I've been digging deep, and guess what? I've started to see the truth behind why Devil Fruit users can't swim, how Pwn Glyphs are made, and the secret of Sea Prism Stone. The secret of why Devil Fruit users can't swim, the creation of Pwn Glyphs, the mystery of Sea Prism Stone, our focus today to unravel these riddles is this. The new technology, the light pressure glove, introduced by Vegapunk in Chapter 1062. This light pressure glove doesn't just hold light for viewing. Vegapunk 5, Vegapunk supposedly unable to touch a hologram, was seen striking one, wearing this light pressure glove. This incredible gadget lets you touch the very essence of light itself. And here's the kicker, this glove is deeply related to a substance called pyrobluin. It's a major clue in our mystery solving adventure. So, what's the deal with it? Let's break it down step by step. How exactly do the light pressure gloves, which can touch light that should be intangible, work? First of all, light pressure is a concept that exists in the real world and refers to the pressure exerted when light strikes the surface of an object. This means that even light, which should be intangible, has pressure. In terms of what we see, for example, there is Mercury's tail fin. There are dust particles in space that shine due to the sun, forming a beautiful radial tail. But this tail is originally linear. However, it spreads radially due to the sun's light pressure. So, the light pressure glove is likely something that applies pressure to make light tangible. So how exactly did Vegapunk complete such a technology? The key is the super important element for this consideration, a pyrobloin. There seems to be a mineral called sea prism stone, and we call the component in it pyrobloin. Pagaya, in episode 240, the substance called pyrobloin, which appeared in Scipia, makes it possible to touch, swim, and even ride on clouds that should normally be intangible. Why is it said that pyrobloin is used in the light pressure gloves? Let's start by explaining the nature of pyrobloin in detail. The condensation nuclei that create clouds are different from others. They are keratin particles carried into the sky by volcanoes. And when they get moisture, the difference in density forms sea clouds and island clouds. Pagaya, the nature of pyrobloin spoken by Pagaya in episode 240. It might be a bit difficult to understand, but the most important thing here is that the condensation nuclei that create clouds are different from others. A condensation nucleus is a microparticle that acts as a nucleus when clouds are formed from gaseous water vapor to liquid water. On the other hand, pyrobloin forms tangible clouds of scipia, i.e. solids. From this, the nature of pyrobluin can be said to be different from the normal condensation nuclei that condense from gas to liquid. It further condenses the gas to a higher density solid. For simplicity's sake, I'll use the term solidify. This is what pyrobloin seems to do. The component that makes the normally intangible clouds tangible is pyrobloin. It's exactly like the effect of light pressure gloves. So, the true nature of the light pressure gloves might be something that utilizes the properties of pyrobloin. Could it solidify light particles to the point where even a hologram, which should be intangible, becomes tangible? In One Piece, when thinking of technology that can touch intangibles, the first thing that comes to mind is armament hockey. Except for targeting the weaknesses of Devil Fruit users, this armament hockey is the only countermeasure. 
the flowing body of Logit type Devil Fruit users, which feels almost invincible, can be captured as a solid. Rail Armament Hockey is the power to capture a solid, so could it be that the light pressure gloves are imbued with hockey to capture holograms as solid? But honestly, this is a delicate matter. Because of Rayleigh's words in episode 597, hockey is a power that lies dormant in all humans of the world. Rail, that's right, hockey is purely a latent ability of humans. So it's not something that can be artificially created, so the likelihood that light pressure gloves are related to armament hockey is low. In fact, in episode 1064, the research facility's floor replicated Skypea's clouds using pyrobluin. From this, it can be inferred that Vegapunk can apply pyrobluin at a very high level. Therefore, the light pressure gloves were likely manufactured using pyrobluin. And there's another point that caught my attention regarding what Pygaia explained about pyrobluin. Pyrobloin, it is carried into the sky by a volcano. Pagaya, so it seems that pyrobloin is probably transported into the sky through eruptions. From this phrase, we can unravel the method of creating the pwn glyphs, which are said to be indestructible. Now I'd like to delve into the method of manufacturing the pwn glyphs and its place of origin, Wano. This must be the so-called pwn glyph. No explosion or anything can scratch it. Intelligence officer, from the words of the government official who attacked O'Hara in episode 395, we understand that Pwnglyphs boast such durability that they can't be damaged by any kind of attack. It's possible that Pyrobloin is deeply involved in the production of these Pwnglyphs. Earlier, I hypothesized that the light pressure glove changes light particles into a solid form through Pyrobloin, allowing one to touch what's normally intangible. Could Pyrobloin, which has the property of solidifying an object to a high density, potentially create an incredibly hard stone? Typically, there's said to be no correlation between an object's density and hardness. In the world of One Piece, as Pagaya mentioned, you can walk on clouds thanks to pyrobloin. From there, we can deduce that the Pwn Glyph's extraordinary hardness may be due to its components being condensed by pyrobloin. 800 years ago, the indestructible book was made by the hands of the Kazuki clan. That's the Pwn Glyph. Nekomamushi, as indicated by Nekomamushi's words, the Pwnglyphs were created in Wano by the Kazuki family. If Pyrobloin really was used in the production of the Pwnglyphs, there must be a place in Wano where Pyrobloin is produced, right? Where could that be? Some of you might have already guessed it. Yes, it's the underwater volcano located beneath Wano. In episode 1050, after Kaido and Big Mom were defeated by Luffy's crew, they were seen plummeting into a magma reservoir. The underwater volcano beneath Wano is also erupting. This means that there's indeed a crater present beneath Wano. Pyrobloin is transported into the sky by volcanoes, as Pagaya mentioned. This suggests that there's a high possibility Pyrobloin exists in Wano, which has a crater. By the way, in episode 924, Hawkins said, See prism stones that are spread around the world originated from this country. Only craftsmen in Wano can refine it to such a small size. Hawkins, Wano is the birthplace of sea prism stone, and its primary component is likely pyrobloin. This indicates that pyrobloin indeed exists in Wano. Now we've established the presence of pyrobloin in Wano and the potential of its use in pwn glyph production. So, how are the pwn glyphs processed? Actually, this is depicted in episode 818, when Neko Mamushi explains that the Kazuki family are craftsmen. It's a silhouette carving characters onto the pwn glyph using a hammer. This means the characters on the pwn glyphs are engraved using a hammer. This raises a question. How can characters be engraved onto the pwn glyph? Which is supposed to be scratch proof with just a hammer? Most likely, the characters are carved before the stone becomes scratch proof. Then, how does the pwn glyph become so hard that it's resistant to any scratch? One theory is that the property of pyrobloin to solidify objects gets enhanced by heat. If this theory holds, after engraving the pwn glyph, it is heated to reinforce its properties, making it as hard as it is. In the world of One Piece, there is another substance that contains pyrobloin. It is called sea prism stone. In the blue sea, there is a mineral called sea prism stone, and we call the ingredient in it pyrobloin. Pagaya, as Pagaya mentioned in episode 240, Sea Prism Stone contains pyrobloin. 
Sea Prism Stone is a mineral that can only be obtained in certain seas, because it embodies the energy of the sea when a person with abilities touches it. They lose their strength and abilities as if they touch sea water. The noteworthy property of Sea Prism Stone is its hardness. In episode 400, Fukuru explained to Luffy and the others who invaded Eni's lobby to save Robin that Sea Prism Stone is as hard as diamond, so those handcuffs will never come off. From this, we can see that Sea Prism Stone boasts considerable hardness. It's unclear how Sea Prism Stone is manufactured, but its place of origin is the Wano country. Considering that there are underwater volcanoes in Wano, it's quite convincing that pyrobloin is used in the production of Sea Prism Stone. Perhaps the sea energy contained in Sea Prism Stone also comes from Pyrobloin. If the sea energy in Sea Prism Stone does come from Pyrobloin, it would solve two mysteries at once. One is that Luffy was injured by a light pressure glove in episode 1062. The other is that Devil Fruit users become sinkers and cannot swim when they fall into the sea. Now let's delve into the main topic, why can't Devil Fruit users swim in the sea? Eating a devil fruit turns you into a perpetual sinker, which is now almost common knowledge. While various mysteries have been solved one after another, the reason why they become sinkers has not yet been revealed. There are many theories about this sinker mystery, but the pyrobloin we've thoroughly examined this time might be the key to solving it. Pyrobloin is a substance that contains the energy of the sea, solidifies objects and cells, and is speculated to be used in the production of sea prism stone and pone glyphs. From this, it can be deduced that the reason why devil fruit users cannot swim in the sea is that the pyrobloin in the sea solidifies the bodies of the users, rendering them immobile. It may sound far-fetched, but there is already a definitive piece of evidence. Here it is. What's wrong? My body won't move properly. Buddy, in episode 19, after eating the chop chop fruit, Buddy is sinking in the sea describing that his body won't move properly. From such a depiction of drowning, it can be inferred that ability users become sinkers because their bodies solidify due to pyrobluin and can't move properly. Lastly, I'd like to discuss an unsolved mystery related to this topic in one piece. Are you aware that the graves of Ace and Whitebeard have petrified? After the Summit War, Shanks collected the belongings of Ace and Whitebeard. Ace's grave has a pistol and a hat, while Whitebeard's has a Nagi Nada and a cloak, but all items except the Nagi Nada have mysteriously petrified. This shocking scene was depicted in the final cover story of the 19th short-term focus series, titled The Graves of Whitebeard and Ace. At that time, among One Piece fans, this mysterious petrification garnered a lot of attention. Questions arose such as, was it Hancock who petrified them? and Hancock had no reason to visit the graves of the two, leading to various speculations flying around. And to this day, the mystery remains unsolved. Considering the petrification and hardening properties, pyrobloin solidifying action might be related to the petrification of Ace and Whitebeard's graves. The whole truth about pyrobloin is not yet revealed, but if pyrobloin is used in light pressure gloves as we discussed, Perhaps, in the future, Dr. Vegapunk will reveal the secrets of Pyrobloin, Poenglyph, and the sinker mystery of ability users. That's all for today. This channel posts summaries, explanations, and ranking videos related to One Piece. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. See you in the next video.